Hi guys and welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie or a cotton sock and I make Sims 2 and Sims 3 content on this channel. You are currently watching the final video, video three of three in my Sims 2 setup and play series. In the first video in this series, we talked about where can you acquire the Sims 2 in 2022. The second video, we talked about how can we fix the Sims 2. And this last video right here is going to probably be the longest, but it is how can we beautify The Sims 2 to update the graphics and make it look more modernized. This will include things like default replacing base game hairs and clothing and makeup, updating the game's textures, adding new skies so they look a little bit more modern, and probably what you all are looking forward to the most reshade before continuing please ensure that you have applied the fixes discussed in the last video i'll put a card in the top right before you comment maddie my game won't even launch or it crashes when i hit the play button maddie please go check out the previous video where i discussed all of the fixes for the sims 2 at length i just wanted to note before we begin that i make my tutorials accessible and understandable and over explaining everything no matter your tech savviness so if i'm talking slow or over explaining, please understand that there are others that may not understand or learn as fast. This video will include chapters on the timeline so you can skip around if you are uninterested in what I'm talking about and want to move on to the next section of the video. In addition, there is always a little gear in the bottom right of the video uh, where you can speed up the video if I'm talking slow. On mobile, it's in the top right. Okay, so with all of the precursory and information out of the way let's just jump right into the meat and potatoes of the video so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come here to your documents and this will be where you have a little folder called ea games in ea games this is a fresh clean install of the sims 2 you're just going to have one folder don't worry if you don't have any of the others called the sims 2 ultimate collection you're going to double click and we're going to go into this folder now this is going to be very empty for you if once again this is a fresh clean install of the sims 2 which i'm speaking as though you guys have just installed The Sims 2, just applied fixes, and this is like a vanilla game right now. You're not gonna have this folder called downloads. Actually, if you follow the last video, you might already have it. But for those of you, just make sure that you double check and go into documents, EA games, The Sims 2, and have this folder called downloads. If you don't have this folder called downloads, what you're gonna do is you're not gonna click on like any of the folders. Don't click on any of those. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're clicking on this blank space to the right or underneath and just hit new folder and you're gonna call it downloads with a capital D. Just like this right here. Once you have that, just hit enter. You now have the ability to install mods for The Sims 2. Simple as that, really. You don't need anything else in this folder. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna just load into any neighborhood. I loaded into Pleasant View, and you're gonna come down here to these three dots on the left, and you're gonna click on the options here. And if you're wondering, by the way, how to get this white interface, we will go over that in this video. But for now, just click on the three dots. We're gonna go over here to to game options and you're going to click on this right here it says display custom content dialog just click it and it's going to open up this and down here it says custom objects are currently enabled you're going to want to just make sure that you do have that enabled i'm not sure if this comes by default already on but you definitely want this to be checked if you don't have this checked then your custom content your mods aka are not going to show up in the game so after that just hit okay and then if you come over here display custom content dialog at startup you can just turn that off unless you want it to throw you a message of all the custom content you have in your game when you load the sims 2 it's quite annoying so just turn it off so now that we have that out of the way that is all you need to install mods and hair and makeup and everything else that is like the foundation that we need to build upon for this video by the way i just want to mention that every single last link every single link i mentioned in this video will be put in a google doc which i can pin in a comment down below in addition i added this cool little outline feature so you know if you're uninterested in me talking 
talking about creative sim sliders, but you're interested in when I talk about environmental mods, then you can just skip here and see all the links. It's a really nice way to organize this. So I put a lot of effort into this. In this video, I'm gonna be going down the list and showing you guys. So this is essentially my dialogue for this video, but just in a written form. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way and we are now able to install custom content, I am just gonna dive right in to how to install Reshade. So you may be asking yourself, what is Reshade? Well, according to Google, Reshade is a generic post-processing injector for games and video software developed by Crosire. Hope I said that right. Imagine your favorite game with ambient occlusion, real depth of field effects, color correction, and more. I'm gonna put a couple of screenshots of my own on screen right now so you guys can get a better feel for what Reshade is. This is going to elevate your graphics tenfold. It is going to make your game look beautiful. And I always get asked how I install Reshade, so I'm gonna throw this right in the beginning of the video now. Now, this is very taxing on your graphics card. So before we get into this, if you are running on like a 20 year old laptop that's hanging on by a thread, maybe you don't want reshade and maybe just stick to mods because those are a lot less taxing on your computer, but it's very easy and straightforward to install reshade. So let's get right into it right now. Okay, so this tutorial is going to be assuming that we all have Sims 2 RPC. We went over what Sims 2 RPC is in the last video. If you don't have Sims 2 RPC, then your installation of reshade is going to be completely different. And actually I have no experience because you have to get something special called an ultimate AI si loader but don't fret because i have an article for you guys to follow so this upcoming reshade tutorial is just for people with sims 2 rpc if you don't have sims 2 rpc then please follow this mod the sims article so in the description box below the first place we are going to go to install reshade is reshade.me and it's going to bring you to this website you're just going to hit the big purple download button and that is going to drop you down to the bottom of the page we are going to click download reshade 5.4.0 by the way all the programs i'm showing today are very well known widely known revered programs so if it throws you a little error that says this file it may have hazardous material or whatever don't worry nothing i'm showing has any viruses or malware or anything in it so do not worry but after that we are going to come down here to this little button and we're just going to run reshade now this number 5.4.0 depending on when you are watching this video it is going to say a different number it does not matter it really does not matter after that we can just close our browser and now what this is going to do is this is going to detect every single .exe program you have on your computer what we need to do is we need to go to our sims 2 install directory so i'm going to right click on my desktop icon and go to open file location and this will pop me right to where i installed the sims 2 at and then we are going to hit browse here on the reshade window we're going to want to make sure we are directing reshade to this little directory the, the install directory of the sims 2 and you can just use that tip i used again um, to pop it open in this window as well to open file location okay so after that we are going to want to point reshade to sims 2 ep9rpc.exe this is what you are going to select to install reshade on go ahead and install reshade for the vast majority of us we are going to install this with microsoft direct x 10 11 and 12. however if you have dxvk which i showed what that is in the last video you are going to select vulcan but the vast majority of us that do not have dxvk we are going to select direct x 10 11 and 12. if you don't know if you have dxvk or not if you come here to your install directory folder if you have dxvk you are going to have a file called d3d9.dll. If you have that file here in your Sims 2 install directory, you will select Vulkan. If you don't, like I don't have that, we are going to select DirectX 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so hit next on that. It's gonna say select preset to install. We're just gonna hit next. And then lastly, it is going to say select effect packages to install. I like to check all of these on and install all of them. What reshade creators tend to do is they will take these effects that are listed here and they will build upon them and tweak them to their liking. So I would recommend having these. Otherwise, when you install, you know, presets out in the wild, out in Tumblr, you may be missing some effects if you don't install all of these effect packages. So after that, after we check them all on, I'm just going to hit next and it is going to install reshade. It's going to say successfully installed reshade. We can just hit finish here. There is going to be two more things that we have to do before we actually are able to launch our game with reshade. First and foremost, you're going to go back into your Sims 2 install director 
history and we are going to go to a file called dxgi.dll. When you just installed Reshade, this file was actually added to your Sims 2 install directory. Now we are going to go and rename this file. By the way, before we do this, you have to come up here to the little view tab on the top, hit view, and then turn on file name extensions. You want to make sure that that is checked on. So now it should show all of the like .exes and the .logs and .txes. So go back to that file we were just talking about dxgi.dll. We're going to right click on it. We're going to hit rename and we're going to move like the little blinking bar. We're going to move that all the way over and just erase. And we are now going to call this reshade.asi. Just as it is typed here, it is going to change it to a little blank piece of paper. And then we are going to drag and drop this into the mods section. I believe this folder comes with Sims 2 RPC. So after that, what we are going to do is we are then going to go one level up in this file directory. So we're going to go to SP9. I'm going to click on that here. And then we're going to go to the folder called TS data. And then after that, we're going to go to res, R-E-S, res. Lastly, we're going to go into config. And this is the file directory that you want to make sure you're in. So just make sure your bar up here says the same thing as mine. And then lastly, we're going to open up graphics rules dot SGR with notepads. So just right click on it, open with, we're going to click on notepad. And there's two values in this file that we are going to change. So the first one is at the top here. So it's going to say constants, but then after that, a little bit down, it's going to say SETI low, SETI medium, and SETI high. You want to make sure that yours matches up with what I have here. So three, three, three for all low, medium, and high. After you have changed that, what you're going to do is you are going to hit control F and type in this right here, option dirty wrecked. I don't know what this means. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> and then we're going to either hit enter, or you can also hit find next here. And that is going to bring up this. It's going to highlight it. So it brings you right to it. And it says options without UI access option, dirty wrecked. What you want to make sure you have here is for setting high hashtag no option yada 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 you guys get it you're going to want to make sure you have that as zero then for the one below it you're also going to want to make sure it's zero and then last but not least for low you also want to make sure that that one is zero so after you have those two things in this graphics rules file change you're just going to want to go up here to file save and then you can close it right up so the last thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and launch the sims 2 and we're going to want to make sure that that installed correctly and everything was nice and boom if you see this little bar up here it shows that reshade was in fact installed if you don't see this reshade bar up here then something was done incorrectly by the way the first time you launch with reshade you're going to probably get the hourglass of death that you think crashed your sims 2 don't worry reshade is just installing all of its effects and all that so make sure that you are letting it install don't close your game just if it needs to throw a little temper tantrum really quick, let it throw its temper tantrum. I might also say there were errors compiling some effects. That's fine. Okay, so after you let it install, it's going to say reshade is now installed successfully. Press the home to start the tutorial. So the home button on your keyboard. If you have a smaller keyboard, you may not have the home button. In that case, you need to see up here whatever reshade rebounded to. It might even still be the home button. You just have to find where your home button is on your keyboard. I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't tell you more than that if you don't have a home button i don't know what it'll do but i do in fact have a home button so i'm going to click the home button and this is going to try and give you a tutorial i'm going to skip the tutorial because i am familiar with how to use reshade here so the first thing you're probably going to want to do is go over here to settings and you are going to want to rebind all of these so i would recommend putting the overlay key on whatever button you don't use for me i like to turn my walls up and down with the home button so i am instead going to rebind and i'm just going to click on it highlight it and I'm going to click shift and F12. This is what I like to use to open up my reshade. So when you see overlay key, that just means that this is what is going to launch reshade. So if I close this out, I can open and close reshade now with shift and F12. Next up, the effect toggle key. So this is going to turn on and off effects, but I like to bind this to shift F10. So whenever I clicked shift and F10 together,
together it is going to toggle my effects on and off and then last but not least another one that i like to do is shift f8 for previous preset and this will just toggle between different presets you have on your computer okay so now that that is done now that reshade is all set up and is working i'm gonna close up reshade and i'm gonna show you guys just quickly how to use an effect so you gotta close your game unfortunately to install these so my favorite sims 2 reshade preset is called turniped by feliki i don't know if i said that right but this is what it looks like it is gorgeous and it has that beautiful depth of field alluring effect that i love for my reshade obviously i don't play with the depth of field on because it gets a little weird if you do but it makes beautiful screenshots so this is on their patreon you don't have to pay for it this is just where they host it if you come down here it's gonna say turniped underscore feliki you're gonna want to install that one so just left click on it and it's gonna say this file can harm your computer just it, keep it it does not have viruses trust and then i'm also going to install the second one here so to the right of that turniped feliki mxao and cinematic so this right here is what is going to give you that blurring this base one right here the turniped feliki this is going to just give you the really nice kind of like saturated bright look but what is actually going to give you the blurring and the depth of field look is the cinematic mode that comes with this. So you may ask me, Maddie, where do I install these now that I have them? Well, you're going to come to, once again, your Sims 2 install directory. So I just go to my desktop. And what you're going to do is just drag and drop both of these effects right into your Sims 2 install directory. I don't know if it exactly has to be wherever you install the Sims 2. Just put them in there. It's easy to find. Okay, so then I'm going to reopen the Sims 2. Now I'm going to relaunch it. And after we load into the Sims to once again i'm going to open up reshade so whatever you bound that button to mine is shift f12 we are going to come up here to this bar right here where it says reshade presets under the home tab and we are going to go down to turniped and hit select on that and it is instantly going to change how your screen looks okay it is going to look very different so as you can see it definitely brightens up the game now and i'm just gonna close this so once again i'm gonna hit shift f12 and i'm gonna load into my town really quickly here and show you guys what this looks like you will immediately begin to tell that everything is much brighter it is much more beautiful oh my god here we are oh it's so pretty oh my god i love reshade dude i love it so there is a little bit of lag okay because i mean it's reshade now one thing when you load into a neighborhood that i'm gonna really recommend you guys do is come down here to the three dots as you can see it's a little bit blurry we'll fix that here in a second and we're going to come over here to graphics and performance options and we're going to turn smooth edges to less make sure you have smooth edges to less you guys will need this otherwise the effect will get really messed up and this goes for using any preset and reshade you have have to have smooth edges to less okay next we need to fix this blurriness that this filter adds because i cannot stand it <laughs> so first and foremost what is giving it that weird blurriness at the edges is this right here it's called chromatic abrasion you can see instantly when you toggle that on and off it immediately becomes a little bit clearer now you can either turn this down a little bit just to leave the effect on personally i would come down here to prism turn it to zero and then you have to do it for the other one as well because there's two on top of each other here so if you scroll all the way to the bottom i think is where you can find the other prism effect so i'm going to turn that to zero otherwise you can just uncheck both of these i'm not quite sure why these are on there and then i'd recommend loading into a lot just to see how it looks so i am going to load into the pleasant household okay and here we are in game with our little reshade you're gonna want to make it let it run for a second okay it's gotta run if you notice there is going to be this weird like depth of field sort of effect that's going on if you open up reshade once again and you turn off a d o f this is depth of field if you just check it off that weirdness won't be there now you have to remember depth of field is just when you're taking photos okay you don't want to play with depth of field on otherwise you're gonna get some really weird do you see how like half of it is blurred half of it is it so you have to toggle it on and off for photos but what's good is that if you remember in the beginning here we set up this key previous preset and then we installed two different files when we went to go install turniped the reshade preset we're using right now if you just hit shift f8 it will actually toggle back and forth between them so like 
like say I want to take a photo here really quickly, I can just come in here and take a really quick photo. And then if I hit shift F8 again, it'll toggle it on and off. It is amazing. I would highly recommend binding that um, just so you can do some quick photo taking. But yeah, you definitely do not want to play with A, D, O, F on. So you, do, you definitely want to uncheck that and just your basic turnip head uh, by Feliki preset up here. So yeah, you can toggle between them manually but it's quicker just to use like the hockey but yeah this is what um depth of field looks like this is how i get that really nice blurring in the background of all of my photos i think that that is pretty much it with reshade it just makes everything look so much brighter and so much more beautiful i absolutely adore reshade and by the way uh this is what the game looks like with it and then this is without so i'm hitting that shift f10 key once again if you come up here to your settings and you bind the effect toggle on and off that is how i am doing that and oh one last thing i definitely should tell you guys print screen the button print screen is going to be your default screenshot key now what you want to do is you definitely want to make sure you have a screenshot path so this is up in your settings here screenshot path this is wherever your photos are going to go when you take a screenshot so this menu is kind of i hate i don't like it it doesn't let you browse um you have to go in through like this little reshade menu and you have to manually find where you want to put this. It's a little bit wonky and I don't like it, but I created a folder in my pictures called reshade and then I have to navigate to that. So I have pointed reshade to a different hard drive in my pictures and I pointed it to that reshade folder I just showed you guys. So now every single time, I'm going to close this up, every single time I take a screenshot, I'm going to toggle that depth of field. So once again, for me, it's shift F8, creates that really beautiful blurring in the background effect and then i hit print screen it will now spit a photo out into my pictures in my reshade drive by the way if you see this right here if you hold left click you can actually focus wherever you want the reshade to focus on now these lines will show in the reshade photo so you want to make sure that you are focusing the camera and then letting go of your mouse otherwise these lines these purple and blue will show in the photo yeah this is if you hold left click and and that is how I focus my photos. It's actually really cool that this is like a thing. You're basically using reshade as a camera, which is really cool. Anyway, guys, so that is the reshade portion of this video. I think I covered everything, gave you guys the basic rundown, how it works and all that. So if you have any other questions about reshade, I don't know, you know, the ins and outs of reshade. I can't tell you much more than what I've shown you, um, but that was like a basic overview. I'm pretty sure I hit everything I wanted to. If you are getting visual flashing as I was in this clip right here, then I would recommend you guys do this process at the bottom here, um, specifically these last four. You can pause the video right here. Some of you may have to do this. Some of you may not have to do this. It all depends. And yeah, hopefully this will fix your problems. So next up on the list, we are going to talk about the wonderful world of Sims 2 default replacing. There are many different kinds of default replacing you can do in The Sims 2. So obviously here I have a hair from Sims 2 base game, obviously with my very alpha Sims 2 game. It doesn't look like it quite belongs. The texture is a little bit blurry. It just doesn't look like it, it doesn't look right. You can also see that with like these kind of hairs as much as I love like the kind of look at the sims 2 house going on if you have hairs that are kind of out of place like this it does it, it is it's a little bit jarring okay now as you can see here this hair is just like the base game sims 2 one but when i click on the one next to it it actually shows like an updated nice like what we would say is alpha hair it looks more modern essentially this is what you would call a default replacement hair it basically just replaces you know the base game one and replaces it with something that looks a little bit similar it's not exactly like a, a close match but this bow here would kind of like double as the barrette in her hair and the length is kind of the same etc etc this would be what we would call a default replacement hair you can see that here too um this would be another base game hair but i have instead default replaced it with a brand new hair that looks about the same it's about the same length it's a, it's the same style it's both ponytail you can see that here again this is what it looks like in base game sims 2 and here is the default replacement i have installed so now that i have showed what a default replacement hair is you may be asking maddie where can i find them well it is linked of course on the google doc and if you come here to the sims 2 default database this will include 
include every single hair that is in the Sims 2 modding community that has been flagged as a default replacement. So if you come down here and you click on hair, we can click on female hair and this will bring up every single hairstyle in the entire Sims 2 game. And if you click on, let's say this ponytail with a little bump on it, this has compiled all of the creators that have created a default replacement for this hair with the bump on it. So what I would recommend doing is if you are going to go ahead and default replace, by the way, you would have to go and default replace every single hair in the Sims 2, which for a lot of people is very daunting. As you can see in my game, I haven't gone ahead and done that. Like a lot of these hairs are just the base game Harris because I just it takes so long to default replace every single hair here's the hair with the bump I didn't default replace it actually I did with this one but I guess not all of the swatches were replaced that's fine I have actually linked a bulk hair default so this is someone that has default replace all the hairs in base game and the expansions and whatever I don't know exactly what they have default replace like up until what expansion pack oh wow it's actually a lot wow I didn't think it was that many if you go to this image here you can see all the hairs that they have replaced it's really great so if you wanted to download this bulk hair default this is just one of the ones there's a lot of them out there this is separated by expansion pack so what you would do by the way you need a rar file opener like winrar or 7zip so if we go to base game here and we install the base game hairs it might take a little bit to download these files are very big because they contain literally every single hair in the base game sims 2 default replaced what i'd recommend doing is go to your downloads folder that folder that we made in the beginning of the video open it up and you can just make a new folder called default hair replacements this will be a really good way to separate them to make sure that they aren't occupying your entire sims 2 downloads folder because they will fill up the entire folder and it will be very confusing okay so that file has just finished downloading here so what you would then go on to do is you would go to your empty default hair replacements folder and just drag and drop all of those right in there now i will tell you guys you cannot have two hairs defaulting the same exact hair so if i came to the sims 2 default database right now and I defaulted this hair you know right now and I downloaded let's say this one right here and so I had this one installed in my game and let's say you know I left it for two weeks I came back and I was like oh this is one of my favorite hairstyles in the game let's download the default replacement I forgot that I have this original one and let's say I installed I don't know this one right here if I had both of these hair defaults in my game at the same time I don't know if it will pick one or the other or if it will combine them in the sims 3 if you have two hair is default in the same thing it will combine them and it will look really weird and just wonky so make sure that you only have one default replacement replacing one max's hair otherwise it's gonna get a little weird i'm pretty sure i don't know actually know what happens but bad things will happen don't do it that's why it's probably easier just to download a bulk default hair that someone has uploaded so i don't know just pick and choose i like to be picky with what i have it's honestly some of the sims 2 hairs i kind of like like there was this one right here i actually really like this bandana hair i think it's really cute um so i probably wouldn't default replace that one there's you know some some in here like this towel one this towel one doesn't need to be replaced like some of them are kind of reaching if you need to replace them but Anyway, that is default hair replacing. So next up, what I will talk about is Sims 2 skins. So there, this is there's only four skin tones in the Sims 2, only four swatches. In base game Sims 2, the skins are very patchy and they don't look very good. So what I'd recommend in that case would be to download a default replacement skin. This is the one that Pleasant Sims uses. Uh, this is just the Honey Honey Skin Blend. This is a really nice, just smooth base. I have it here in my game right now so it looks really nice it is very smooth so if you have like older sims you'll have to download some smile lines like wrinkles and that kind of thing otherwise um, it's going to look just like their you know baby face like freshly out of the womb all that which i will get into the wrinkles that i use a little bit later but yeah default replacement skins they look so good and they just improve the graphics of the game by tenfold so to install that you would just scroll down here to the bottom of the post download honey honey all defaults and then it is going to install down here we're just going to go ahead and open it up and then i have mine under default eyes i don't know why i have mine under default eyes um but yeah you can make like a default 
defaults folder in here. That's what I do. I like to separate all my defaults just to keep everything nice and organized. And then you're going to install Honey Honey, just like the default ones. So I have mine on the top here. And then you're also gonna wanna download the Supernatural ones if you want your Supernaturals to have like custom skin, make it look a little bit nicer. So yeah, I have all of those in my game and it just looks so much better. Like the smoothness is great. It's not patchy like the base game Sims 2 ones are. Next up, we have default eye replacements. I go back and forth. I change my eye replacements all the time. I am just obsessed with like these brown and blue ones, the dark blue, but they're so high quality. The alien ones look a little bit weird. I don't know why they're just bloodshot eyes. I can't tell you, but I love these eyes. I think they look absolutely stunning in game. The quality, the texture is just so nice on them. You can see the different colors here so this is like a hazel this is a more gray eye this is dark blue here is light blue and here is brown i love the brown i think that the brown eyes are so pretty um but you can tell them whatever default eyes you like i know that Cousin sims uses puppets plain and simple i change mine all the time so i'm currently using these ones they are by sarah beats i don't know if i said that right sarah beats and once again to install those you would just come here to the default option here you don't want to get custom customized they'll give you like extra swatches in here and they won't be replacing like the maxis ones i mean you could do that if you wanted to but we're talking default replacements right now so you would come in here you would just install this and then open it up and you would just drag and drop this file into your defaults you may want to organize them so i have a default eyes folder once again you can organize all this stuff if you really wanted to next on the list we have default clothing replacements so this is going to be in the same place that we have the default hair replacements and what this will do is this will just replace like the base game outfits and update them to look a little bit more modern let me see if i can find any of my default replace outfits i have a lot of clothes i'm so sorry so for example this top right here has been default replaced this is one of the tops that comes with downtown and you can see the original icon here but it is different on the sim so highly recommend replacing your clothing once again this can be a little bit daunting because you would have to theoretically go in here and default replace all of this clothing like one by one pick and choose so when i have an outfit that i really despise in my game like for example there are those cow outfits that you can put on your sims here in cast where they there's also a clown outfit so i probably should default replace that one <laughs> maybe i want the clown i'm not sure yet so for example i have these gorilla costumes that i would never use like i would never use these in my vanilla sims 2 game so i went ahead and i found them here on the default database wherever they are. I don't know where they are. Ah, here they are. So I found the gorilla suit. So I picked this one out specifically. Like sometimes I'll write down five outfits, you know, per play session that I want to replace. So maybe that time I wrote down gorilla suit. I then went to the default database and I clicked on the gorilla suit and then it gave me all of these different options to replace it with. So it's really nice. It gives you a lot of variety you can choose. And while it may be daunting, you then will not have to deal with these ugly outfits in cast. <laughs> so make Makeup defaults are much of the same as how hair defaults work and eye defaults work and skin defaults work. So these will replace the base game makeup and update it to look a lot better. So I believe I am using that default makeup in my game right now. So if I were to go to like the base game swatches of the makeup, it looks a lot more updated and the quality is a lot better and it just looks so much better than what base game Sims 2 makeup looks like. I use these ones by Moopy. You would just make your own default makeup folder and just drag and drop it in there you don't have to like go into any files this all goes in your downloads folder so those are all of my game defaults hair eyes clothing but the last thing i will mention here is you may not want to go through and default every single outfit every single hair all the makeup i mean makeup is kind of easy but i'm talking about hair and clothes mostly so there have been many modders that have made hide all maxis clothing and hair and what this will do is this will make Make it so that these hairs that okay that's default replaced these hairs that are from maxis these won't even show up in your catalog so this mod is by jordy they also write that this mod will also hide all maxis clothing and hair from body shop as well and you can see kind of the guide here so if you wanted to hide all base game hair and clothing in specific then you would download hide clothes xp0 so on and so forth there's kind of like thing here that shows you i don't think that this is all expansion packs 
this. I was actually linked by Nonsensical Simmer on my Discord, thank you, of this hider that is actually updated all the way until, well, I think all expansion packs, honestly. So you would come in here and you would just download the expansion pack that you want hidden. So I will link this one instead of the Mod The Sims one because that one's not updated. So now we are in the Cass Extras category. This is stuff that you may want to consider putting into your game that I think is pretty important, but it's not like you need it, but it's really good stuff. So maybe you still want this stuff. The first thing I would recommend is some new sets of face templates. The face templates that come with base game Sims 2 are not the prettiest. You can kind of see here. We all know that face template one, you know, when I was eight years old, trying to make a Sim version of myself, I would always gravitate towards face template one. But with these new sets of face templates, you can actually see here that they change every single template that is in cast, which is really cool. Now, just a side note, EA broke face templates 21 and 25. So you'll actually need this mod right here. And you can just download this top one. It says Argon Arch Fix. And then I put that in a folder called Default Face Templates in addition to Kalina's face templates. So yeah, these are all of them, by the way. You can find any sort of face template. If you don't like these ones, there are so many others online. So you can go and check those out. But I think that these give a really nice base and you can make sims really quickly like this if you're trying to populate, you know, one of your towns or something like that. And look at this elf one. It's so cute. Oh my God, I love it. And then here are the male face templates. So we saw the female ones. Here are now the male ones. But yeah, they're just really good looking face templates. Would highly recommend. Okay, next up, I have wrinkles. I did say I would get to this. So if you download Leela's Honey Honey Skin, the skin doesn't come with any wrinkles or imperfections. It just gives you a really nice, smooth base. What you actually have to go ahead and do is download some custom wrinkles yourself. So these ones are by EP, EP, I don't know how to say that. It's linked in the Google Doc nonetheless, but they come in dark and a little bit lighter ones. You can also stack them. So these are like the more subtle ones. And then here are the darker ones. So these ones give some smile lines. These ones give crow's feet by the corners of their eyes. These ones give frown lines. These ones give worry lines on the forehead. So this is a really nice, just like basic set of wrinkles. You can get wrinkles anywhere on the internet, honestly, but these are just the ones that I have in my game. And I think that they are really nice. I give these to my older Sims when they're about halfway through their adult life. I'll throw some wrinkles on them if I remember that is. So next up, I'm gonna give you guys some rapid fire, just like my favorite lips, my favorite eyes, my favorite eyeliner, etc. So first off, let's start with lips. These are the best lip gloss lips I have ever found in my Sims 2 career. Guys, these lips are absolutely stunning. It's a really simple, there's no color in them. It's just like a basic, just really glossy lip. One of you actually told me in one of my videos that these lips aren't available anymore. So I actually went ahead and I've re-uploaded them on Sim File Share. So if you guys are interested, there is a link on the Google Doc where you can just download all of these and it comes with all seven. I don't know the name of the creator. It says FW in PS. So if anyone knows the name of the actual creator that made these, please give them credit in the comment section below. I just have no, like, I don't remember where I downloaded these from. When I go through Tumblr, I like download a bunch of stuff at once. So I'm sorry to whoever created these. I have no idea what your name is, but you did an amazing job. These are my favorite lips I have ever seen in my entire Sims 2 career, okay? Once again, rapid fire. So my favorite eyes slash eyeliner are Lilith's Advent 2012 liners. These come with eyeliner and eyelashes attached and they are really beautiful actually um, just like a really simple sort of eye makeup look obviously they are not 3d lashes they are painted on your sims skin i don't know if it'd be possible to do 3d lashes in the sims 2 i think you'd have to make it like an accessory like an eyeglass or something like that in order for it to actually show up as eyelashes so unfortunately we have to result to just like the 2d sort of painted on sort of lash look but these are by far my favorite lashes they look so cute and these may have been made in 2012 but that fox eye trend that is currently going on right now in 2022 10 years later these have it in there my favorite eyebrows eyebrows are a must for me i love a good set of eyebrows and i have mossy or mousy blue eyebrows so i'll show you guys what these look like they are just really nice like natural sort of eyebrows you will have to choose the corresponding sort of color that matches but i love these they are thick they are bold they are beautiful i just love these eyebrows 
eyebrows so much. I will say I do have default replacement Sims 2 eyebrows, which I forgot to mention in the default section, but these are just some eyebrows that you can add on top of default eyebrows. So my last thing, you actually can't access it in cast. You have to go into live mode. So I am going to come over here to Daniel and what I'm going to show you guys is body hair. So in Sims 2 natively, body hair was not a thing. So I'm going to change Mr. Daniel Pleasant over here. I'm going to change him into his bathing suit just so I can see what we got working on. Okay. So as you can see with the honey, honey skin, there's no body hair. He's just clean. He's a clean shaven man. I'm going to add some body hair to him. So here is the link. You are going to download this one right here. Box three inky fishes, male body hair overlays. You're going to download the fixed version and just drag and drop that right into your mods folder. And then after that, you would go into buy mode here. We're going to go over to miscellaneous all, and then there's going to be this crate right here. It's going to say male body hair controller. You're just going to drag and drop that like out on the ground and you're going to want to change your sim into their swimsuit. You can use sim manipulator or you can also use the blender sim blender here. If you come to the sim blender by two Jeffs, if you have this in your game, I think you can also do it with FFS lot debugger or as it's commonly called bat box. There's three ways you can change your sim. You just want to make sure they're in their swimwear so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this body hair is automatically going to match to whatever their genetic hair color is. So Daniel obviously is a redhead, so all of his body hair is going to be red. And as you can see, it added a nice body hair to him. If you don't like the body hair, uh, unfortunately you can't see quickly, you know, what body hair you're choosing. So you kind of have to go through trial and error and just see like which one you think that sim would have. So I think this one's a really nice one for Daniel. And there we go. He's no longer like a clean little little shaven smooth as a baby bottom sort of thing and this body hair I don't know exactly like if it's recognized as like an accessory or whatnot but it does stay on them in all of their outfits and then after you're done with the crate you can just delete it and the body hair will stay on them you do have to do this for all your male sims and I tend to forget to do it okay so next up we are going to talk about sliders face sliders. If you don't know what a slider is in The Sims 2 or any other Sims game for that matter, I mean, I guess not The Sims 4 because Sims 4 doesn't have sliders, but way back, you know, in the ye old days in The Sims 2 and Sims 3, we had all the facial features on sliders like this. So as you can see, it's manipulating her eyebrows. Now you can tell which ones are natively in The Sims 2. So for example, all of these ones are just in base game Sims 2 and you can, you know, do the basic things, lowering and changing thickness of eyebrows, changing the arch of the eyebrows, eyebrows, so on and so forth. You can do that with the eyes and the nose and everything like that. Now, as you can see here, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different sliders natively in The Sims 2 without mods for your eyes. Do you know how much eye variation in real life a person could have? Everyone's eyes are very different. And if you were to keep only these eight sliders in your game, you may not be able to accurately make different Sims or, you know, a Sim self or whatever. So that's where sliders come into place. Sliders allow you to manipulate things in the sims 2 that you may not normally be able to change so for example i can change i don't even know what this is called the under nostril area of my sim here because i have a custom slider that lets me do so the sliders in sims 2 are super basic and you can't get much facial variation now i would say if you don't make your own sims this may not apply to you you may not be interested in sliders but for me i have lots of sliders and i have included all the ones i use i use sim nope key this one comes with 20 different sliders. I use a face length and lid slider, 18 different face sliders, and digital angel sliders in my game. I'm not going to go through all of them, what all of them do. Those are just my recommendations to you guys, but sliders are really great and I would highly recommend that you guys go ahead and get these in your game because you really can do really cool things with them, make your sims look very different. So the next section of this video is going to be about Sims 2 genetics. Did you guys know that there are dominant and recessive eye colors and there are also dominant and recessive hair colors in The Sims 2. Genetics were super detailed which is crazy that this game came out in 2004 and the genetics are this in detail and this in depth. There's also dominant and co-dominant skin tones which is really cool. However, if you play long enough in a town and I know in Pleasant View this is 
particularly pertinent. If you play for enough generations in The Sims 2, because of how genetics work, everyone will end up having brown hair and brown eyes. And I don't know, I forget what skin tone swatch they will have, but I'm pretty sure it'll be one of these two in the middle. So that's why we need an equal genetics mod. So Evie writes, this mod changes genetic rules for eyes and hair in your game, and it's perfect for simmers who like to have full control over their new sims born in game. It allows recessive eye hair colors to overcome dominant ones, making it possible to have a baby with green slash light blue slash gray eyes and blonde ginger hair, even if one of the parents has dark blue slash brown eyes. In conclusion, it makes the dominant and recessiveness in phenotypes non-existent. All phenotypes have an equal chance to prevail. So it's basically like a 50-50 shot if a sim were to get their mom or their dad's hair type. And this will actually make it so you don't have that problem where all of your sims' eye colors end up being brown and their hair color ends up being brown and they either have one of these two skins in the middle here. This is a really good mod to have in the beginning of when you start a neighborhood, unless you mix in townies, of course. So you may ask me, Maddie, how do you install this? We're gonna go into the download tab here and we're going to download Eevee's Equal Genetics. Once again, you need to know how to open RAR files. Look it up, it's very easy. 7-Zip or WinRAR is a good program to open up RAR files. I have a folder that I have titled Equal Genetics. So I'm gonna just drag and drop my Equal Genetics into the folder here. There are three files, but we can only install two out of the three. If you see here, Evie writes, if you like your aliens being unique and don't want alien eyes on normal sims, skip the aliens included version. I actually like alien eyes being included on normal sims. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the ones that have alien eyes included. And then you're also gonna to wanna to download the hair. Once again, if you like your aliens being unique and don't want alien eyes on normal sims, you can skip the alien one and just install the eyes version instead, but you cannot have both in your game at the same time. Make sure you have one or the other. And that is it. So now once you start having babies in your game, you won't get the brown hair, brown eye sort of legacy that Pleasant View has. My next recommendation is actually this right here, a phone. <laughs> no. So this section of the video is actually build and buy mode items that can help you update your graphics. So I will put a picture on screen right now. I'll put it on the right here. The one on the right is default Sims 2. The one on the left is with this mod by Ivy Sims Tumblr. They have went ahead and made all of the small appliances in a white shade. Normally it's like a cream sort of yellowish, dusty, weird color. I don't like that. So this makes the phone a white shade it also makes the smoke detector a white shade and then the burglar alarm i don't think they have a burglar alarm in here i should definitely buy them one let's see let's get a little burglar alarm here and this is what the alarm looks like so yeah it just modernizes it makes it look a little bit better i don't i can't remember if the creator of this mod also changed the textures a little bit so they're a little bit high res pleasants are really getting their screen time today so next up on the list is these custom computer screens so i'm gonna get angela's but up here to her room. And I'm gonna show you guys what these are. So this is Monique's hacked computer. This isn't featured in the video, but I guess I can just throw it in here. So Monique hacked computer, it's a custom computer. So you'll have to come in here to your TVs and computers and you can see them here. This actually allows you to transmit money between households. It allows you to shop online. It also allows you to pay bills online. I don't think they have any bills right now, but you can pay bills online. You can do child banking, give people loans, transmit money, et cetera, et cetera these are really great. That's not what I was trying to focus on, but I'll just, you know, plug Monique Tax computer right here. But I did want to focus on in terms of graphics of these computers is custom computer screens. So I'm going to have Angela come over here. We're going to have her go and write a little article. No, Daniel is not available to talk to you. But if I come over here, you can actually see that all of the computer screens are updated to not look like uh, the computer is old. <laughs> I don't know. And then my second recommendation alongside the custom custom computer screens. By the way, this is what the custom computer screens look like. I did a crappy job of like showing you guys what it actually is. There's a new screen for the chat room. I think, I don't know if this is email, I think. There's one for just like the desktop and then there's one for finding a job. Okay, and then you're also gonna want this alongside the custom computer screens is you're going to want to brighten up your Sims' monitor. By default, the desktop is very, very dark. I don't know why it is so dark. I feel like this would have been a really easy fix for EA to do, but I digress. So yeah, it just lights it up. And if you don't 
don't install the lighter computer screen, it will still look dark. You will have the custom computer screens, but it will still look dark if you download one, but not the other. So they definitely work in tandem. Next up, these next section of mods are specifically for changing the way the babies look. So in base game, Sims 2, ignore the picture here. I'm just trying to show the little milk bottle. Ignore the baby literally grabbing their own milk out of the smart milk machine. Um, but I just wanted to show the milk bottles are green. It is so weird. I don't know what baby formula the developers of this game were looking at when they made this item, but the mod I'm recommending is just a really simple baby bottle replacement. It makes it so the milk isn't green. I don't know why it's green, but I digress. My next mod recommendation is baby hair. So in default in The Sims 2, babies are bald and the only way that you can see their genetic hair color is by their eyebrows. But with this mod by Fano, you can actually go ahead and see all of the little tiny baby's hairs, which is so cute. So how to install this, because it's kind of confusing how to install this, you have to go, you don't want to click back to download you, you don't want to do that. All you want to do is you want to scroll down here after all of these nice little photos and click on this button. Fano Eugenic Skin Dash BU Hair, you're just going to want to download that and open it right up. What I do is I make a folder called Baby Hair, and what you want to do is you want to put this Z in front of it because you want to make sure it loads last. So Z underscore and then I just call it baby hair and then just drag and drop all of this into the baby hair folder and your babies will have beautiful little heads of hair. Next up, I'm sure you guys have been seeing this entire video. We are going to talk about clean UI. Now this is perhaps one of the most controversial sort of mods that I will mention in this video because a lot of people actually really like and enjoy the blue Sims 2 UI, which is fine if you enjoy that, if you like that kind of nostalgic sort of look. But the clean UI by Great Cheesecake Persona, for me, really improves just like the overall look of the game. Beyond that, it doesn't just change the UI, but it also stretches windows to fit on mod modern monitors because The Sims 2 was made on CRT monitors, those huge, really thick monitors were being used. Well, we need something to update that because otherwise the resolution of the game is going to be super small and super weird. So clean UI beyond just looking really nice and kind of cleaning up the game a little bit. It also stretches out a lot of the in-game menus so that they are tiny and small. So I'm going to close on the game and I'm going to show you guys how to install this because it is a little bit daunting to install and it's kind of confusing. So first and foremost, in addition to installing clean UI, there's a couple things you guys are probably going to want to install. I would recommend downloading No Pause Frame by Nopekey. This makes it so you don't have that big boisterous red sort of window. Um, this is really good if you're taking screenshots a lot, which assuming you're watching this video, you probably have reshade thus meaning you're going to want to take screenshots of your game. So first let's get the no pause frame and then we'll jump back to getting clean UI. This just goes in your downloads folder. I don't think I need to show you guys how to install this. Just place it in your downloads folder, plain and simple. In addition on here on the recommended CC page, you can go ahead and install the better bubbles. This also updates the graphics bubbles in the game, like the thought bubbles, the speech bubbles. Once again, this just goes right in your downloads folder. So just drag and drop that. I put mine in a folder called fixes. I like to just put all that stuff in the same place. So now that we have those two things out of the way, my last recommendation would be to get the new book covers, the default novel icons. This makes the textures of the books that you see in game a lot higher quality. And I think these are Sims 4 textures, if I am correct. I think they're book covers from the Sims 4, but I love this graphic design style. I think it looks so nice and just so aesthetically pleasing. Once again, this just goes in your downloads folder and I have the default book covers flavor as you can see I named it my own sort of thing here so default book covers I just downloaded the top one and just dragged and dropped it right into my mods folder okay so now that we have those little add-on mods now we're going to install clean UI which this is gonna take a second so we're gonna go down here to this big download button and just download it right there and open it right up first and foremost what we can do is just drag and drop the two downloads folder just drag that on your desktop so we have it in one centralized place you can open that up now and inside here you're going to have a folder a folder in a folder called gckp 
clean UI. We're gonna open that up here. And what we have to do now is you are going to go through each of these folders and look at the comparison photos here. On the left is the buy plan outfit default. This is what it looks like in default Sims 2. And then this is the much wider window that would work on most modern monitors. So what we would want to do then, and I assume most of you probably want this one on the right, we are now going to go and make a folder. I named mine clean UI here in your documents, EA games, the Sims 2 downloads. You're going to just call it clean UI. And what you would then go on to do is just choose the one you want. So once again, we're choosing the one on the right and you would just pick one, don't pick both, just pick one and drag and drop it in that clean UI folder. Now we're gonna go back up in our little choose one, you know, clean UI GCKP folder and we can delete the one we just did and move on to the next one, which is cast. So we're gonna look at the comparison photo once again. You're gonna choose the one that you want. I have this one on the top left here. So if you have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, you're definitely gonna want this one because it gives you, look how many windows that gives you. It's just beautiful. So what we would then go on to do is just choose the corresponding one. So the names are up here on the top. So we're gonna choose cast minimum width 1920, yada, yada, yada. It's this one right here. So we're gonna go back to our downloads folder and just drag and drop that right in there. And then we can go back into our folder above it and we're gonna delete the clean UI cast. And then I'm not gonna show every single step because it's pretty redundant. And I think you guys got it by this point, but you're gonna go in each of these folders, pick one of your favorites and then drag and drop it in that clean UI folder and then you're going to delete the host folder just so you don't like accidentally do the same thing twice and go down the entire list. Once you have gone down and chose one file in each of these folders and deleted them all just so you know, make sure you don't have any repeats, you're then going to go and download this final file GC KPA clean UI package and just drag and drop that right into your download clean UI folder. Perfect. Okay, so we got step one out of the way. So back in that initial RAR file that we installed, we obviously just took out the downloads folder and put it on our desktop. We picked one file out and chose our favorite, put it in our downloads folder. We're done with that part. Now what we have to do, this is a little bit more daunting and it's gonna be a little bit more confusing. I'm gonna extract the next folder called two installation folder. I'm gonna extract that to my desktop, just drag and drop it on there. I'm gonna minimize that window. I'm gonna open this up here and we now have two files inside here. One says move to base game UI folder and then the other one says move to cursor folder. So let's start with move to base game UI folder. Inside the move to base game UI folder, there's going to be something that says base game UI path. For the ultimate collection, we are going to go to double deluxe base TS data res and UI. If you're using a different version of the Sims 2, that's not ultimate collection. You're going to go to this folder right here, but I'm going to just go and hit open file location on my desktop icon, and then I can back track my windows and it's a lot easier if you just open it like that. So I'm going to go and double deluxe. It says base, it says TS data, res, and then UI here at the bottom. So we are now where we need to be and we are going to take this folder here that says uh, move to base game UI folder. Inside of that, it says choose one loading screen. So this is going to be the loading screen where you are able to get these beautiful little backgrounds and that sort of thing. But before we do that, we need to actually grab this file right here, GCKP clean UI tooltip. You just want to drag and drop that into the TS data res UI folder. We're going to just go in there and put that in there. And then next up, we're going to go into this folder that says choose one loading screen background screens. So we're going to double click on that. And you can actually see in here, there is a little diagram that shows you what each one is. I love this one. It is called GCKP clean UI loading screen rule dot package. I adore this one. I use this one in my game. Obviously there are others. You can choose this city one, the B one and there are several options in there. So I have the rule one. So I'm going to go to the rule one and just put that in my TS data res UI folder. I obviously already have it. So I'm just going to go in there and replace it. And we are done with the move to base game UI folder. We are done with that one. So I'm just going to go back up to our installation folder and I'm just going to delete it. Now we have to do the cursors. We have to get those cute little updated cursors as well. So this part is a little bit daunting because you have to go to each expansion pack and replace the cursors. I mean, not every expansion pack, but just these four. So in that case, what we are going to do is we are gonna start with apartment life. So we're gonna go back up to our Sims 2 Ultimate Collection installation location. We are going to go and find the apartment life folder. We're gonna go TS data. We're gonna go res. We're gonna go down to UI and we're gonna go to the cursors folder. As you can see, I 
have my windows side by side, really nicely organized. So I'm just gonna go to the Apartment Life EP8 Mansion or Garden, double click on that. And there's a backup in here in case you want like your base game Sims 2 ones back if you don't like the clean UI anymore. But we're gonna gr grab this sledgehammer and we're just gonna drag and drop it and we're gonna replace it right in there. And now we have the updated cursors with clean UI for apartment stuff. So we're gonna go back up to our cursor folder, delete that just to know that we did it. Now for base game, there is a lot more cursors. So we're gonna go to this base game cursor path.txt and this will tell us exactly where we need to go. So for people that don't have ultimate collection, you're just gonna go to the Sims 2. But if you have ultimate collection, you're gonna go to Dova Deluxe base TS data res UI cursors. We were just there. So I'm gonna go to Dova Deluxe base TS data res UI and cursors. And I'm gonna just go into the base game folder and just drag and drop all of these right on top, replace them all. And there we go. Now we have the clean UI, beautiful little cursors here. So I am going to delete the base game folder and the base game text document just to make sure that I know that I did both of them. Next up, we have mansion and garden, which is SP9. This.txt file will tell us right where we have to go. So for ultimate collection users, we're gonna go to fun with pets. Uh, for everyone else, you're gonna go to mansion and garden stuff. So I'm gonna go to fun with pets, SP9, TS data, res, UI, cursors and we're gonna just drag and drop that roof cursor just replace it right there perfect and once again we're gonna delete that txt file and the folder and last but not least we have one more expansion pack to add the cursors for this one is open for business if you have ultimate collection it will be called best of business so we're gonna go to best of business ep3 ts data res ui cursors and then we just have this one that says for sale and we're gonna replace that okay perfect we have the cursors for clean ui so with that said if you have done all of that guys you have clean ui in your game now which is great i'm just gonna delete this to installation folder we don't need it anymore wait i have it open sorry so i'm gonna close that out and then we'll try and delete it there we go perfect and if you launch your game you should now have clean ui if you did the installation correctly it's kind of difficult when you have to add all those cursors to the different folders but as long as you get it into the right place like a text document says you should be a-okay now the last thing i want to show in the interface section of this video is gun mods camera mod this is a staple in the sims 2 this is non-negotiable you need gun mods camera mod especially if you're going to later be doing all of the environmental mods you need this mod this is such a staple for me and this was made way back in 2005 this piece of cc it's not even cc it's a mod stands up to this day it is so great so phenomenal so what this does is this allows you to get way farther out than you would normally be able to do in base game sims 2 this also allows you to take some really nice photography um as gun mod says grab angles you never could before you can get uh this close you know to someone's eye with no clipping or anything like that this is just a staple guys you need this you need this right now we are going to grab the gcm dash 31 dash a dot raw it's the one with the most downloads on it we're just going to click it and we're going to download it it's a raw file so once again you need to be able to know how to open raw files 7-zip or winrar great resource after that we can just minimize that and there is a readme text document and this will explain everything that this does and how to install it as well from here it's pretty straightforward you're just going to go to your documents your ea games the sims 2 and you're actually not going to go in your downloads folder so do not put this in your downloads you want to go into your camera cameras folder which is in the same place it's a little bit above the download so go into cameras and this is where you want to be by the way if you are unsure of which version to download obviously in this video i showed version a these tell you what this does gunmall says they prefer version a uh, which is no fade and no clipping so if you zoom into your sim it will not fade and it will not clip into the camera but there's obviously other versions uh, the max is live version that means it's going to clip when you zoom into your sim and then there's the b version but i would recommend just all downloading a with that said we're going to just grab these files and just drag and drop them in our cameras and just replace what's already in there you want to replace it you do not want to do anything else just replace them and then there we go so we now have gun mods camera mod in our sims 2 game you'll be able to get really close in neighborhood and live mode and it's just lovely it's a beautiful thing this mod environmental mods will really just give your game that little bit of extra oomph my first recommendation always would be to get the max Max's match lighting mod. Now the max 
Maxis Match Lighting Mod is a lighting mod configuration mod for The Sims 2 that aims to improve on vanilla Maxis lighting while at the same time retain its very essence. So this just takes that EA lighting and it just makes it look a little bit better. So we're going to come here to the download links and we are going to download the lighting configuration and just download that right to our computer. We're going to open it up here and there is going to be a lot of folders. So here in the documentation, it says step one, if you are an ultimate collection user, which I am, copy all of the contents of folder 1.0 to your game installation folder. So for all of us ultimate collection people, we are just going to take this folder and then skip to step four. So in my case, I'm going to just go into my Sims 2 install directory and then do that thing where I pop up to the top again so I can see all of my expansion packs here. And we are going to just highlight all of this, grab it and replace it all. So when it says this destination has 67 files with the same names, just hit replace on it and boom, there we go. Us ultimate collection people can then go on to skip to 4.0. If you are a double deluxe user or non-origin user, please pay attention to the documentation. But since I use ultimate collection, I'm going to skip to step four. So step four is get the snow fixes from this link and follow the instructions given on that post. So I'm gonna copy and just paste this right into my browser here and go to the snow. So this is a blue snow no more. This is a shader fix. And we're just gonna click on this right here. It's gonna take us right to where we have to install it. Now to use this, you should probably go in your game and test out each one and see which one you like because there's four options in each of these folders here. Sometimes there's even more than four. But if you trust my liking and you trust my pace, then the ones that I have chose are the EA roof shader, and then the main package, of course, Mo Hoody water and the Mo Lit water, Moilit water. <laughs> and all I did was I went into my downloads folder and made an EA lighting mod folder. So yeah, I put that in like a, a subfolder. So those are the four ones that I have tested and that I like for my game. This is all going to be up to your personal choice. Unfortunately, unlike Clean UI, I don't think that there's any place that I can actually see an example of what each one does. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, so after you have chosen which one you like, we are going to go back to to the Dread Pirate lighting mod folder that we did before. And you're just gonna drag and drop all of these store lights. You're gonna drag and drop them into the EA lighting mod folder that we just made that we added all of these Dread Pirate fixes in. So just drag and drop those in there. I'm gonna replace all of them because I already have them. And once again, that is in the folder for your downloads folder here in the Maxis Match lighting mod.rar file. Now last, but certainly not least, we are going to go back to our Sims 2 Ultimate Collection in our documents folder here. And we're gonna go into a folder above the downloads folder called config. Now, once we're in there, there's going to be a thing called a user startup cheat. If you don't have that in there for whatever reason, if you come back into the Maxis match lighting mod RAR file, there is already one in here. You can just drag and drop this in your config folder. But after you do that, you're gonna open this up with notepad. You may not have as many lines of text in here. That's fine, don't worry about it. But one thing you are going to wanna make sure you have is all of this, okay? So this came with the Maxis match lighting mod. If you already have a user startup file here in the config folder, just make sure that you have these lines of text. If you're wondering where I found these from, this is in the Maxis Match Lighting Mod RAR file um, and the user startup sheet. Just copy and paste all of these lines of text into your user startup sheet like I have right here. And then you're just gonna wanna save that. And last but not least, depending on which shader fix you decided to use, you may need to download Curious Bee's roof placements. So when we did the EA lighting mod and we chose you know our favorites out of all of them if you decided to use Niles roof shader then you in addition need to download Curious Bees fixes that go alongside Niles Niels sorry Niels roof fixes so that is how to set up your Maxis match lighting that is how I get it good and going in my game the next environmental mod that I would recommend you guys to put in your game is the car spawning hydrant this is so cool this will trigger cars to drive by your property um, and it adds a lot of realism makes the world feel so much more alive this is actually an updated version this person did not create the car spawning hydrant they just made it so that limos do not actually spawn because if you have the old version of this mod limos would occasionally drive by i don't know why uh, but they replaced the limo here with a sloppy jalopy which is a lot more realistic and i'm glad that they did that because it was really weird when random limos would drive by 
So to download this, you would just go to some file share, just hit the download button here. And then I have one called car spawn fire hydrant. I just made it its own little folder in here. And then you would just drag and drop that right into the folder. And then this other file in here actually is an invisible recolor because it will show as a little fire hydrant. I'm sure you guys can see here. It does show as a little fire hydrant on your property. You may be okay with that. That's completely fine. Um, but there is an invisible recolor if you guys are interested in that so if you go to this post uh, you can scroll down to the bottom here hit download here and then just download the invisible recolor and you don't want to download this bottom one you just want to download the one that says rc that means recolor and just drag and drop it in that folder that we just had open the car spawn fire hydrant after you have those installed you can load up into any lot the downside of this is that you are going to have to add this to every single lot that you play on um, it will not automatically just come up and start working. It's kind of daunting to remember it every single time you load onto a new lot, but once you get in the swing of like setting up your families and stuff like that, it's like becomes second nature. So once you have loaded into a household, you can just go into buy here. And I like to put it on the edge of my property. So just ignore that. We'll get to that in a second here. Here is a little fire hydrant. If you go into your miscellaneous and then you go into all, you can find it. It costs 12 simoleons. I wish it didn't cost anything. If you right click on it and you go to recolor it, you can actually see the invisible recolor that we downloaded. So if you don't like the look of the fire hydrant, you can just put that there. Yeah, now you will have cars that will occasionally drive by your property. Let me see if I can actually get them up and going here potentially maybe if they want they want to spawn ah there we go there's our first car it's driving by how cute it does disappear it fades like off into the distance so if that's gonna bother you then maybe this isn't for you but personally for me i think that this is a really cool like really inventive sort of mod just adds a lot of realism into your save file the next mod that i would recommend for environmental mods is decorative parking spots now these are really cool because these will literally have cars spawn on top of them which is amazing so if you come here to this post on mod the sims and go to downloads the two files that i have downloaded i just made my own folder called decorative parking spots here and i have the nightlife only because i do have nightlife and i have the decorative parking spots so i have these two on the bottom downloaded here so i just downloaded both of them and i dragged and dropped them right into their own little folder so now if i go to a custom lot let's say i go to my 250 main street let's see if I could show you guys this live in action. So I have a parking lot over here. And if I come to the parking spots, so these, by the way, if you're wondering where these are, cause I'm forget, I'm not telling you where these are. <laughs> if you come into build mode on the public lot, and then you come over here to the garage, you can find them and they cost hundred simoleons. And what this will do is it will auto spawn cars. So that the lot actually looks populated. You can also recolor these to make them look any way you like. You can add handicap spots. You can add little potholes. You can add um, an outline of a dead person. So yeah, this is a really cool mod. I'm gonna go into a household now so that I can show you guys like what the actual spawning looks like on the lot. What's cool too is that the amount of cars that will spawn depends at the current time on the lot. So say you visit, you know, a restaurant at 5 p.m. There's a 70% chance that there will be a car spawning in that spot specific parking space which i assume is made to represent like dinner rush if you go to a nightclub at 8 p.m there's a 90 percent chance you'll see a car there in the parking spot okay so we are here and yay look at that i took mortimer it's only 8 p.m at his house when i switch households so here we have cars in their parking spots by the way custom cars will go ahead and park in these parking spots these are custom cars i think this one's a base game car but these two on the end are custom cars so yeah that's that is how the decorative parking spots work. It makes your lots look a lot more bumping, a lot more active, and just so much better, so much more realistic. So this part of the video, I will say, is adapted from Pleasant Sims's video on how to make the Sims 2 environment look better. I'm gonna show you guys like the updated how-to video of how to replace skies and skylines. So first of all, this is a sky, and this back here is a skyline. When you look at it from far away, it looks 
looks pretty nice and you can also see the skyline from your home lot. Obviously when you get a little bit closer you start to be able to see that it is like a flat textured wall very much so giving Sims 4 when you <laughs> look at things a little bit too close up but when you look at everything like in conglomeration together it does look very beautiful. So how do I get this? Well these are by a creator named Sancta Sanctorium and there's a reason why this mod is called the Great Sky of Totalitarianism. First and foremost I would recommend making a folder in your downloads just called Sky. I actually have mine two folders deep so I have a folder called Neighborhood and then within that I have my Sky, my Skylines, my Terrain and Road, my Texture Placements and my Trees. So yeah you can go I think you can go as many folders deep as you want to in The Sims 2 and I know in Sims 3 you can't go more than one folder deep but yeah you can go like several folders deep in The Sims 2 which is pretty cool. So we're going to start off with the Sky. On the Google Doc the link to the great sky of totalitarianism uh, will take you to this place. And we are gonna scroll down to the neighborhood version of the sky. So we're gonna go download the full archive of hood skies, download on that right here. And Matt is going to bring up all of these. So this is eight different files. So what you would do is just drag and drop all eight of these files into your sky folder that you made, or I hope you guys made. And if we go back to that main directory, you can actually go to the lot as well if you want to download them for your home lots not just the neighborhood so what i do is i also download the ones for the lot so i would just drag and drop those right in there if i didn't already have them and then next up we are going to install the sun in the moon and this is for if you want an invisible sun invisible we don't want invisible stuff i mean unless you're doing like a machinima or something like that but this tells you what they look like so in my game i use just the regular sun and I use the real moon. So we would scroll down here to where the download is, click on the sun, and then click on the real moon. You can see the diagram here. So go to the sim file share, just download both of these files, and then drag and drop them into your sky folder. And then there's one last thing that we need as far as our skies go. There is a cube replacement so that you can see where you need to place this in the neighborhood. In base game Sims 2, anything that you do in the neighborhood will look a little something like this. It has a little rainbow on it. This is in base game, but this mod by Lotus adds a little triangle on the corner of the cube. Let me show you guys what this looks like. So if I come down here to my decorations here, and then I come in here, this will actually change it so it looks like a little triangle. The direction that the triangle is pointing is where you would want to go ahead and place your sky. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Then if you come into your game, um, and then you just go and you know you have all these different kinds of skies now which is really cool personally for pleasant view i like to use the great sky totalitarianism circle day i think that's the one i'm currently using right now and it looks really really nice the sun and the moon you won't be able to see from neighborhood you'd have to load into a lot and like look up at the sun and the moon but those will also be updated as long as you put all of the correct files in here so for me i have 23 files so you can compare your folder with mine and that is how i go ahead and i set up my skies for my neighborhood to look really nice but now we need to add skylines so that we can get this kind of cute little field like little pleasant view small town rule sort of look so we're gonna do the skylines now that we have done the skies so if you come here to my beautifying the sims 2 document there is something called a 360 degree skyline by great cheesecake persona and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here and download v1.1 and just download that and then i have in that neighborhood folder that i showed before i have a folder called skylines well that skyline is downloading you're gonna have to go to the recommended cc page here on the skyline page and go to the sky fix you need the sky fix i think i also linked it here on its yeah i linked it as its own link here on the document so if you go there you just want to download the sky fix you will need these in order for your skylines to work so there's a lot of options here you can choose like sky fix two blah 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 you have to make sure you go with whatever expansion pack you are using so if you have ultimate collection you're going to choose ep6 so you would download that and put that in your skylines folder and then now that our skylines are finished downloading you can just drag and drop all of those in there and you're just going to place them down with the sky fix and all the skylines you should have nine items now if you load into your sims 2 game you would go back to your decorations on your neighborhood here and now next to your 
skies, you will also have lovely skylines. So for the one in Pleasant View, I choose Rural because I think that the Rural atmosphere sort of fits Pleasant View very, very well. And then you would follow that little arrow here on the corner of the skyline. You can see that if you downloaded that mod that we talked about when we were doing our skies, and then you just drag it to the corner, it'll show you actually where it needs to go. So you would drag it to the very, very, very corner of Pleasant View until you can barely see the map anymore. And that will be how you place down your skies and your skyline. Now, if you look down here at the description, it says that you need to turn off fade distance, enlarge the view distance with a cheat and download Skyfix. You already downloaded Skyfix, and if you wanted to turn off fade distance, you can come in here to your little settings and game options and turn off fade distance, and then that will allow you to see these from the lot. The last thing you would have to do in order to get this to work, otherwise you're gonna have a little bit of graphical issues when you get down into the lot, is you have to enter that cheat that it says, Fuent prop lot skirt size increase 120. So to access that, all you have to do is go back into your documents, EA games, the system, to go into your config and then go to user startup cheat the cheat that we accessed earlier when we were doing our maxis match lighting mod and all you're going to put in here is that cheat that it says down here on the mod you int prop lot skirt size increase 120 make sure you have your game closed when you do this by the way and you would just add it as its own line here in your user startup cheat and then save it and once again restart your game or close it out and reopen it or open it up depending on if you had it open or not and now when you load into a lot, you will be able to see the skylines when you look up at the sky. If you don't add that user startup sheet, the sky will be glitching in and out and it will be kind of like flashing a little bit, if that makes sense. So after we have added our skies and our skylines, what you now need to do is load into a lot. Now I do this when I set up my lots in the beginning. So when I move a sim freshly into a household and I am adding my fire hydrant that we went over earlier, as you can see here, I always add it to the left corner of my property, but over the fire hydrant, there is the great sky totalitarianism. You may be asking me, Maddie, why do you have the great sky totalitarianism? I thought we already added it. Well, what this does is this actually will add some clouds into the sky that move according to the time of day. And I don't know, I think it's just like on a cycle. So if you come in here to your miscellaneous and then you hit all, you'll actually have this item right here. It says the great sky of totalitarianism. This is is just like an arched sort of clouds thingy that you can put and you can actually see the clouds moving in real time in the sky so you'll have to place these down every single time you start a new lot and it does work on apartment lots just like how the fire hydrant also works on apartment lots yeah it's really great it's animated clouds that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get and sometimes you know i do forget to put them down but i just think that the skies look so gorgeous with the clouds in the sky so that is all to do with sky and skylines. Next up on this list is road replacements. Now road replacements are a hot topic in the Sims 2 community because if you download road replacements, some roads will actually require you to place down a specific piece on the lot. This is a very poor example. Um, actually, you know what? This is a good example. So as you can see here, there is a harsh line of when I enter the lot and when I continue driving on to the neighborhood. So these are actually their own separate road pieces. I use Curious Bees Road here, and as you can see, it makes the neighborhood roads look very nice. Looks very lovely, and you can see the line as I was talking about. So I'm just gonna scroll through, show you guys the rest of these. These are by far my favorites road replacements. I think that they are absolutely gorgeous. So I made my own folder called Terrain and Road, and on Curious Bees page here, you're gonna have to read which one you need to install. So I do not know what the Radiance 2.4 lighting mod is. If you are using Maxis Match Lighting, then you are not using the Radiance Lighting mod. In that case, don't even pay attention to the Radiance Lighting mod part, but you need to know if you have seasons or not. I'm assuming the majority of us, if not all of us, do have The Sims 2 seasons. If you do have The Sims 2 seasons, but you do not use Radiance 2.4 lighting mod, we are going to download this one right here, Seasons Bundle. We're gonna click on that 
not it is going to be a dead link yay so what you actually have to do is come up here to this hot link it says then the folder containing all the individual downloads is here so we're going to click on that here and you can actually sort these and make them in a list so that it's more easy on the eyes and in here all we're going to download is the fab neighborhood road defaults maxis match i don't know the difference between the non-maxis match and the maxis match so i just go ahead and download maxis match we're going to come up here and we are going to hit download and that is going to bring up four different files here and in our terrain and road file folder that you guys made we're just gonna drag and drop those right in there like that so after that the next thing we are going to need is our road overlays so back on curious bees website we determined that we probably for the most of us need the seasons bundle so we would then go on to download the road overlay seasons we're just gonna come up here to download and download all of those files and then just drag and drop them right in your terrain and road folder. I already have them, so I'm just gonna skip adding them. Next up, after we do the road overlay, we're going to need our sidewalks. So once again, you're gonna download the seasons one and download that. By the way, if you already determined that you have something other than the seasons bundle, you need to make sure you download it accordingly. So I'm going to just drag and drop our sidewalks in here as well. Next, we need terrain defaults. So we're going to download our terrain defaults. So just hit download on that drag and drop it in your terrain and roads folder and lastly the last thing that we need to install is our terrain paint so we're going to just download all of those open it up drag and drop it into our terrain and road folder and boom we have all of our terrain and road files that we need you want to make sure that you do all that with your game close otherwise you're going to have to close it down and then open it back up when you are done so just have it closed before we do all that okay so now when you load into your neighborhood you should have these lovely roads here and and they will look very cute. Now there is a problem uh, with these roads. So let's say I load into a household. When you load into your household, your household's road is going to look like this. What do I do, Maddie? Why the hell did you tell me to download road replacements if they don't work? Well, thank you for asking that question that I was about to answer, fine viewer. If you go into your buy mode here and you go into decorative and then go into miscellaneous, the first thing that will be here is the exact road that we just literally default replace and by the way if you do not have move objects on you can just type in move objects on if you hit Control shift c just type in move objects on and this will let you place down your road pieces like this usually just need three and if your property is at the edge of a junction like a junction in the road like this which you can do is hit r and then recolor it and there's actually all different kinds of road junctions so if there was a road that was like sending this way i could change a recolor to that so on and so forth you guys get it but these are just really great i love alpha roads the downside of this is you do have to replace every single road piece if you do use curious bees roads um, but i do it when i do my initial household setup so i never forget that i have to do it another downside of having these type of road replacements is apartments apartments become a huge problem with these road replacements because there is a very crucial step you have to do so i have some apartments over here I have my two sims, Ivy Cooper and Lucy Burb, who are married, I think they're engaged actually, living at this apartment complex together. So as you can see here, my roads are completely fine, um, but because of how apartments work in The Sims 2, I actually do have move objects on right now, and I am unable to even touch the roads in apartment complexes. Before Sims even move in to apartments, you have to place down those road pieces. If you forget and then have your Sims move in and you try to place them down i don't think it'll let you place them down on the on the apartment complex so yeah you have to make sure before you even move sims into the apartment when all four of these apartments are empty or however many apartments you have in the apartment complex you have to place them down next in our little google doc here that we are going to be replacing is linden trees linden trees are notorious in this community a lot of people don't like them because they are very high poly count meaning that they utilize more resources but there was actually a person who made updated linden trees cricket was here made some redux 
and fully seasons enabled hood decorative trees and Max's replacements. So in this new version, we have a better mesh, we have a better appearance and texture, and they also replace the old linden trees. So if you have had linden trees before, these will replace it. So I go back into my neighborhoods folder. This is the folder we have been in for the entirety of this section of the video. And I'm gonna go into my trees folder and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. If you already have the old linden trees, you have to make sure that you delete them so you can search your folder for these files right here and replace them with these ones. As you can see, um, the creator of this post tells you which one old ones to delete. So we're gonna go to sim file share. We're gonna download the brand new linden trees. Just open them right up. You wanna make sure you have your Sims 2 game closed. In our trees folder, we are just going to place and drop down our linden trees. We're gonna put in all of them here. I already have them in there, so I'm just gonna skip them. And yeah, it should be nine files. Don't worry. Uh, these ones, the silent dragon ones here, these are just for Bon Voyage and all the tropical worlds. So don't pay any attention to those. But after that, if you actually go ahead and go to your neighborhood view after placing down the lovely linden trees then you can see that they are a lot higher texture than like the basic ea ones and you will also have some extra trees in here so there are these ones which look so much better and just so much more detailed there's the small ones and yeah i went into the decorations and then the trees and you can just place these down but these look so much better than like the base game ea ones so highly recommend the linden trees especially because they are brand new. Last thing I have in terms of environmental mods is terrain textures, which are probably out of all these things on this list. These are what I recommend the most because the terrain in Sims 2 is a little bit wonky it is looking a little bit old and just like not not to my liking so if you can see in here i actually have brand new terrain um it just looks so much better and i think it works too in live when you can see it so maybe asking me maddie like how do i do it stop teasing me how do i do it well i'm gonna go once again to the folder we have been working in this entire video sims 2 ultimate collection downloads in my neighborhood i have a separate folder called texture replacements and you're gonna go to this link on mod the sims just go to the download and you're going to download the beaching cliffs terrain paints and then you're going to choose either black gray or old for the cliffs you can only have one so don't pick all three just pick one if you want a photo of what that looks like here are the gray cliffs as you can see there's gray i think i have gray in my game here are the black cliffs right here black cliffs and then here are the old cliffs so they look a little bit more weathered i think this looks a lot more like what max has had initially like in the game but i use gray in my game so i would then go down and just click on gray and then you also need the snow and the beach download so once you have downloaded all of those you would just open them all up like so and then drag and drop them into that texture replacements folder that we just made so we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop them all in here like so all of the different kinds of textures go put that in there perfect perfect and that in there perfect and there we go so you should have 10 items in this folder and then your terrains will look all nice and high quality textured when you load back into your game the last part of this video that i want to talk to you guys about is genetically correct sims if you have watched my sims 2 pleasant view series the streams that i do on my twitch channel and then i re-upload here on youtube you probably know what genetically correct sims are for those of you who are unaware this is cassandra goth this is cassandra's dad mortimer and this is cassandra's mom bella goth if you notice and pay close attention here cassandra doesn't look like either of them who cassandra actually looks like is the maid kaylin langerak the sims 2 pleasant view maid and that is because they have the same exact face template these two women have the same exact face whoever was making cassandra at ea did not make cassandra genetically have a mixture of bella in Morty's face like how normal genetics would work. If you therefore wanted to make Cassandra here look like Bella in Mortimer because she's a pre-made sim, well that would take a little bit of fixing for us to do. That is where genetically correct sims come into play. A lovely mutual of mine by the name of Chrissy made what 
Cassandra should look like in The Sims 2. So this is with her clone face of Kaylin Langerak, the maid. This is what she looks like in base game Sims 2. And this is what she would look like genetically related to both Mortimer and Bella as she should be. And personally, I much prefer the genetically correct Cassandra. I think she looks so much better. And I despise the fact that she has the same exact face as Kaylin Langerak. So with that said, you may be asking me, Maddie, how, how do I go ahead and make a genetically correct Sim? Like now I want to do it. How do I import their faces? So Chrissy has actually gone ahead and already pre-mixed what Cassandra should look like via the genetics of Bella and Mortimer. You guys are going to ask me, how do I mix genetics for other Sims? I have no idea. All I know is how to import said faces into your game. This article actually gives a really great explanation of how to do it. So if you wanted to do this from vanilla, like say, you know, maybe you don't want to remix Cassandra's face. Maybe you don't play in Pleasant View. Maybe you wanted to take like two other Sims that don't have a genetically correct face. And this article can take you step by step how to do that. I'm just going to be showing you guys how to import already pre-rolled genetics. So today in this example, I'm going to be using the genetically correct version of Cassandra. So I'd come here to Chrissy's blog. I have her genetically correct Cassandra linked. I also have her genetically correct Alexander. So if you wanted to instead do this for Alexander or maybe even Lilith and Angela, because Lilith and Angela are also not genetically correct related to Mary Sue and Daniel. And then you could also do them. So they would look like more of a mixture of Mary Sue and Daniel's genetics. For all intents and purposes, I'm just going to be showing this with Cassandra today. So I'm going to go to the Media Fryer link that Chrissy has linked. I'm just going to download her Cassandra here. And now we have a Sims 2 pack Cassandra. And we are going to need a program called Sims PE. I'm sure a lot of you probably already have this. If you don't, it is linked here on the Google Doc. Just click on this link here. It will take you right to a download. And we would then just open this up. And it has all these like loose files. What you can do is actually make a folder in your documents EA games called Sims PE. And then we'll just extract all of those files right into there like that. So after you have extracted that, you just have to type in Sims PE here and it will open up a simpe.exe. You can just run that. It's going to run the registry, all that kind of stuff, and it will open up Sims PE. Now this may look very daunting at first. I understand that. Don't worry though. It's very straightforward and simple. So we're going to download that genetically correct Cassandra Goth and I just put the file on my desktop here and I'm going to open up simpe and over here under tools, there is a thing called package tool and then you can hit open Sims 2 pack. I'm going to open Sims 2 pack. I'm going to go to my desktop now where I put that genetically correct Cassandra and I'm just going to open it right up here. It says that there is CC. I'm just going to hit open. Don't mind the CC. It doesn't matter for what we're about to do. And as you can see here, it says facial structure when we open that. We want this facial structure. So what we can do is we can right click on this. We can hit extract and we can just extract this facial structure. Now I like to leave this as the dot sim PE file. Just the name is inconsequential. Just make sure you save it to your desktop and hit save and on your desktop it's going to create two files here you can delete the .xml we don't need a .xml what we need is this .simpe file the random gargle of words okay so now that we have extracted cassandra's correct her genetically correct face we can do is we can now close that up and we're going to go here to tools neighborhood neighborhood browser and we are going to open up our pleasant view our basic neighborhood that we are playing in. In this example, I'm playing in Pleasant View. You may do this for, I don't know, Veronaville or something along those lines. You definitely want to make sure you wait for this to load. The larger your neighborhood is, the longer this is going to take to load. So just be patient with SimPE. Sometimes I have to close it up um, and I even have to, because SimPE is very finicky. I even sometimes have to go to preferences and completely restart the program and clear the catch of the program. Because like, as you can see here, it is literally stuck. Like it is, it is stuck open. She's stuck open. Okay, well, let's restart. Okay, let's try it again. Neighborhood, neighborhood browser. We're going to open up Pleasant View and hit open on that. And I'm not going to touch anything this time. I'm going to let it load. Loading base game. Yes, loading custom, private, whatever. Yeah, let it load. So once this has opened up, the neighborhood has fully loaded. Now we're going to go back up here to tools, neighborhood, and then sim browser here. Now we are going to find Cassandra. In this example, I'm using Cassandra as I already talked about. And I'm going to hit open on Cassandra. And this is going to open Cassandra's like sim. 
And if I come over here to plugin view, it'll actually show me like Cassandra herself. So after I'm in plugin view, I would go over to more here and then go down to open character file. And then if you scroll to the top of Cassandra's character file, we can go here and click on facial structure. So this will be Cassandra's facial structure that she has. Yours is going to be the clone face of Kaylin's. And if you just right click it, you can click replace. And then we would click on the sim PE. We would just hit open here and then you can see that it changed it because it'll be in italics. After that, we would just hit commit and you would hit save. And then Cassandra now in your pleasant view will have a genetically correct face, the face that she should have based on the genetics of Bella and Mortimer. Unfortunately, if you already had Cassandra have babies, then her face is not going to change for her children. They will still have a combination of the Kaylin face and whoever the father's face is. I would recommend doing this in the very beginning of your Sims 2 Pleasant View. By the way, the same process would work, say, if I installed the uh, genetically correct Lilith. Like, let's say I installed her. I would first import Lilith and or Angela, depending on who you use their twin. So they're supposed to have the same face. I would install the genetically correct one, just like we did here. We put it on our desktop. So you'd want to download that, place it on your desktop, and then extract the face structure from that and save it on the desktop, just like we did. So it's the same process. This is not just for Cassandra. Don't worry. Every Sim who Chrissy has made, I think Chrissy also did Alexander. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. I don't do this with all my Pleasant View Sims just because I don't think some of them are as important as others. I just really despise the fact that Kaylin and Cassandra have the same face. Like whoever did that was playing some sick sort of prank because that is messed up. Another option, if you don't want to go ahead and genetically correct everyone's face template, like I just showed, um, I was linked to this by Nonsensical Simmer. And Nonsensical Simmer said that this is a really fun, pleasant view. This is with everyone's face genetically corrected, uh, including dead Sims that are like dead before the game even starts. Like for example, obviously the oldies are very old and their parents are long dead, but they have different faces and these would be genetically correct. So these also include all of the scripted events. As you can see here, Cassandra's face is fixed, which is so nice. And Mortimer's face is also fixed. So this would be a really good option if you wanted to play a genetically correct Sims 2 game and have everyone's face template look corrected. And here are some of actually the pleasant view faces that this person has fixed. Now guys, that is my video on my Sims 2 beautifying guide. This was so long to script all of this, to put this together and show you guys how to put this stuff in your game. If you did enjoy, please feel free to subscribe. I stream The Sims 2 all the time. I stream The Sims 3 as well. If you guys are looking for a place where you can find Sims 2 CC, because a lot of Sims 2 CC, it's kind of difficult to find. I would recommend Platinum Aspiration here on Tumblr. They have really great stuff. Oh my God, look, look at this clothing. It's so nice. Another great resource would be the sims cord specifically the sims 2 cc cast channel they are constantly posting stuff that you can download some nice cc for your game like this is really great cc and it gets updated every single day they also have a really great help channel where you can post your problem um you know this person's asking about reshade all that kind of stuff so yeah really great resource if you have any questions uh you can post them on here i also have a discord but i have a much smaller community than sims court is so if you're looking for like a cute little cozy place to talk with some people about sims and life and make some connections then this is a great place this is much much smaller than sims court but that is my sims 2 guide on how to beautify the game before i sign off i just want to point you guys to pleasant sims's mod list i completely copied her environmental skies and terrain mod her mods list is i think like a year and a half-ish out of date so it's a great jumping off point but a lot of replacement mods came out since she last updated this but it is a really great resource so thank you pleasant sims for making your neighborhoods mod section everything i told you guys in this video she has also made a video for which you can watch here and has all the links as well in addition i would also like to thank nonsensical simmer and twitch witch from my discord for helping me out with procuring this list and making sure i didn't forget any mods like nitty gritty sort of mods so thank you too and thank you pleasant sims as well i hope you guys enjoyed this huge ginormous mod video it took a long time to make and write the script so i hope it could help some of you out i stream every single saturday sims 2 and sims 3 games so if you are interested it is just a cotton sock 
on Twitch, and I will catch you guys all in the next one. Peace out, guys.